younger people, not as many younger people. Okay, so Gabriella, so I'm looking at you. So which came first, the chicken or the egg? The egg. Bruce came first, the chicken or the egg? Chicken. Bruce, I don't know. All right, let's go to older people. Sis. Oh, she's, she's somewhere. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? The yeah. egg. Watch this. Pastor Tacy continually said, and she gave you instruction last week, that Judah must go first. Praise must go first. But she can't just have praise. If you have no thanksgiving, then it's all for naught. How can you praise him if you're not thankful? <laughs> How can you reap a blessing if you have no thanksgiving? It's all about me. I get it all. That's where we get the agnostics from. They turn into the moment. Oh, I get this by myself. So that's why the spirit of heaviness is in here. The soul you ain't thankful for nothing. It started with testimony, Minister Eric. Ain't nobody compelling you or pushing you to get up and over. God is not. A force of things. He is a gentleman. God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ. He won't force you to do nothing. But I know you've got something to be thankful for. But because we didn't open up our mouths because I don't want to speak and I really don't speak. And, uh, and please understand, I'm not an emotional person. I don't want you to get up and shout and start screaming and all that. But I'll tell you this. At some point in time, I said it last week, y'all don't believe me. I'm going to show us in the book. At some point in time, when you open up your mouth and you praise him, God is recording. Him. And he is the man. And this is his very first time, Brother Earl, being away from home. So he, he goes out to, to, to fulfill this dream of, of playing football uh, on this D1 team. This is his very first time from being away uh, from his mom, who raised him by herself. And please understand, every single week his mom writes him a letter just to let him know how much she loves him, but he never responds, nor does he even acknowledge the receipt of her letter unless he wants some money. So one day, very early into his career, and while he's still there, his mom scrapes up enough money to catch the train to go pay her lovely son a visit. And when she gets to the university, she finds her son in the student center in the middle of a whole bunch of people. And he is the center of attraction. He is charismatic. He knows how to hold the crowd. He is telling jokes. And people, women and men and young women and teachers and janitors are falling all over this young man. And from a distance, she sees him and she walks into the student center and she says, Junior, so glad to see you. And he continues on telling jokes, and she says it again, Junior, it is so glad to see you. And finally, he says, she, says, she says it one more time, she says, Junior? And at that point, all of his friends stop, and they look at this lady with this tattered dress and this hand-me-down scarf on her head, and she has holes in her shoes, and her hair is unkempt, and then they look back at Trevor, a.k.a. P-Nice, and they ask P-Nice, like, yo, son, is she talking to you? And Trevor turns, and he looks at the lady, lady and he says to her, lady, I don't know who you're talking to. He said, I don't know who, who this junior is that you're even speaking about. Woman, I have no idea who you are. I don't know you. Then he gets up and then he walks away. Heartbroken and filled with tears, this woman goes back home and she drafts one more letter to her son one last time. And as she writes this letter, this is what the letter says, to my son, I hope you know how much I love you. I might embarrass you from time to time, but by giving you lots of hugs and attention and needless kisses, but it's by the grace of God that both of us are here today. I didn't have a whole bunch of money to give to you when, I, when you were growing up, 
but I did the best that I could. Remember, son, I raised you all by myself. But you need to know that I absolutely love you. Listen, before you were born, I didn't know how much I would love you, but when I looked into your eyes for the very first time, I felt my heart skip a beat. You see, son, the mother's love is hard to explain, and not everyone will feel the same. But now that you're getting older, I felt the need to tell you how much I love you. Time may pass, day after day, year after year, but my love for you will grow nearer and dearer in my heart every year. So again, son, I hope you know how much I love you. Mom. How callous and how cold-hearted. See, T. Nice arrived. He did it all on his own. He got there, he was the center of attraction, but he forgot the sacrifice that his single mother had for him. How many of you have ever done that? How many of you have ever got to a place where you forgot where you came from and you start smelling yourself? And you turned your back on everybody who sacrificed and you said some things that you know that you shouldn't have said because it was flesh. See, the flesh rise up so you forget about the spirit and the flesh rise up and you start saying stuff but you forget the endless sacrifice that in this case your mama had for you. How many people understand what I'm saying? How many people understand that this spirit is recorded in the Bible? Today I want to minister to you from a sermon topic, and it is the sin. This is why, this is why the heaviness. Because of the sin of ingratitude. Stuff oozing all out. So you got everywhere you go, you gotta go around shouting, unclean! Unclean! So you're dirty, you're an outcast. So the Bible says that they say master, so they identify who he is in his sovereignty. Master means chief in command in the Greek. So they understand who he is, so they yell out, master, have mercy on us. And if we do a little bit more outside study, man, then we will understand this about leprosy. If you were lepers, you had to be at least 100 feet away from people. Then what does that mean, Pastor? 100 feet, what does that mean? 100 feet is 33 yards. So I couldn't come within 33 yards of you. Think about football and think about 33 yards. That's as close as I could get to you. If I did not obey the command, I could be killed. So they stand at a distance, 33 yards. And that's like from here, even out into the parking lot. They, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now here's a sermon all in itself for you. Jesus didn't have to answer them. But they got his attention. And when they got his attention, please listen to me. Jesus didn't hesitate. Jesus didn't overthink this thing. He answered them immediately. He said, go. Show yourself to the priest. Christ's command to show themselves to the priest was in direct line with the law. See, here again, we always say that Christ didn't come to abolish the law, but he came to fulfill the law. He was not over and above the law. He went with accordance to the law. Please understand that Jesus honored the law here. And you say, what law? What are you talking about? Well, in Leviticus chapter 14, verses 132, it's a great big, uh, long line of rules about being lepers. And it tells you that if you were lepers, you had to be brought before the priests, who then would determine whether you were clean or unclean. But there's more, there's more, there's more, there's more. In order to be able to re-enter society, that it, it was only the priest. Jesus couldn't do it. It was only the priest that could determine whether or not you were clean or unclean. But Jesus' main command was so much more important than what it appeared. It was intended to test and thereby strengthen 
the leper's faith. What test, what thing has Jesus told you that you failed the test? The sin of ingratitude will destroy you every single time. Watch this. Let's look a little bit closer. Let's a little bit, look a little bit closer and, and see how Jesus responds. And y'all need to hear this. When Jesus responded, he said, go show yourself to the priest. He didn't give a promise that he would heal him. But he asked him to walk in obedience. And it is in the obedience that, that there is the implication of healing. So you want somebody to say, oh, you healed. You want somebody to change the situation, but it is in your obedience is the implication of the thing that you're looking for. Oh, it's quiet here, Pastor. They're looking at me crazy, but I know it's good. Jesus didn't utter any outward words of sympathy. He didn't have a dialogue with them. He didn't talk to them. He gave them one simple command. One simple instruction. Let me make this plain to you. That's like you saying, man, if I could just get this chance meeting with Bishop T.B. Jakes, man, every time he speak, man, I'll be watching him on television. When he speak, I know you're talking to me. Because I can feel it. How do you know about my situation? But boy, if I can sit down, if I can talk to Bishop Jakes, Oh my gosh, I know he's going to sit there and he's going he to give me some of them pearls of wisdom. I can't wait. Oh God, please let me allow that to have this encounter with him. So you're looking for that woman fuzzy feeling. You're looking for that, uh, but, you know, I know it's been rough and I, I, I can see everything that happened to you. But you get it. And you have an opportunity to sit down with Bishop. And Bishop looks at you and he says, go. Be humble. And get up and leave. He be like, that's it. See, the thing is, and what I want you to understand is you're not always going to get that woman fuzzy. People ain't going to always sit around and proud of you and play with you. Because the instruction it's so much more important than the account that you're desiring. Oh my God. I say like get this. I don't even know what I say, James. The instruction is so much more than the thing that you're looking for. I, I'm, not, I'm telling you, I don't know. God is speaking. I, I'm just saying what he said. And so the thing is this. Hear me. Hear me. This is the problem. This is what we do in the world. This is what we do here. Well, you know what? The pastor sat down and, and, and you know how he always talk about Mr. Eric and how many times he's been in that office and now that's why they love him. And, but they don't sit down and talk to me. So what? God may have not told me to sit down and talk to you. For the time and season that he was in, that's what he needed. For the time and the season that he was in, because we, was, we were obedient to God, and he was obedient to the word, look at what he's doing now. So how dare you judge? Well, you know, it ain't no cookie-cutter ministry. 